So hello everyone, my name is Tianyu. I work on the Android Studio C++ support, and today I'm going to talk about the new features in this area. So first, let's talk about the expanded GNI support. GNI allows developers to call C or C++ function from Java or Kotlin, and to do so, one simply declare an external function in Kotlin or a native method in Java, and then provide the implementation in C or C++. Note that the signature and the name of this GNI function definition must match the counterpart on Java, in Java and Kotlin according to the DNA spec. Otherwise, you get the runtime error. So without the expanded GNI support, the typical workflow looks like this. You write your code, you build it, you launch to the emulator or a real device, and the app instantly crashes. So you open up Logcat, and you probably see a unsatisfied linker error there. Then you stare your code, and you figure out, oh, there's a typo and you fix it, well, this whole process is frustrating because the feedback loop is very long. And now with the expanded GNI support, we, the ID highlights error uh, in real time as you type, and sometimes even offers suggestions for you to fi fix it automatically. And this makes it much easier. So for example, if you for forget to provide a GNI implementation for the native method, it highlights an error in Kotlin now. And here's another example where you, you have a signature mismatch, you're providing an extra parameter in the implementation, but it shouldn't be there. And also the ID understands the connection between the native method declaration and uh, implementation, so it offers navigation, reference search, and refactoring support. And also we implement type hint, so it's easier to write your JNI code. And also all these features works with native functions that spawn through calling register natives in addition to name mongling. And the second thing you can do with GNI is manipulating Java or calling objects, methods, views, and arrays inside C or C++, C or C++ excuse me. And this, achieve, this is achieved through calling special functions defined in the GNI.h header file that's part of the Android NDK. Again, without the expanded GNI support, this workflow is frustrating, and we are here to help with more static checks so for example, we, imp we implemented completion and inspection for the parameters of find class call. And similarly, for get method ID, where we complete the method name and type for you. And again, similarly for field ID. We also implemented a specific uh, checks that is uh, custom to the semantic of the spe special functions in the GNI header. So for example, here since the, we're, we're calling the char add method from string class, but this method returns a char. So the right flavor to call here is call char method rather than call bully method. And this is a mistake, and the ID knows about it. And here's another example. We're, we're performing more checks on the parameters even for call char method in this case. Char at expects one parameter, but we're passing it two. And lastly, the ID now understands the connection between the string literals you passed to find class get method ID and get field ID and establish the connection between that and the corresponding Java or Kotlin symbols. So again, uh, navigation, reference search, and refactoring just works. And now one more thing I want to talk about is APK debugging reload. So what is APK debugging? Some developers use other tools than Android Studio to build their apps, but they still want to debug with Android Studio. And APK debugging is for them. They can all they can open the APK directly in Android Studio and start a debugging session there. So previously, without APK debugging reload, the workflow looks like this. Every time the developer creates a new build of their APK, they have to re-import it manually and configure the debugging symbols and source code so that it shows, so the source code can show up in the IDE. Now, now with the APK debugging reload, uh, the IDE picks up the changes of the APK on the file stems file system automatically. So users don't have to go through that configur configuration process over and over again. And this helps users iterate much faster. That's it for what's new in Android Studio C++ support. And thank you for your attention. And enjoy the rest of Android Dev Summit. <laughs>